Okay, hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about something called binding energy. But before we start, I wanna make sure that you have everything you need in front of you to be able to complete this lesson. So I have my notes on binding energy. Uh, I also have a PowerPoint that goes along with it that you can follow along with. This is a page from the PowerPoint. I'm also going to need a periodic table um, so make sure that you find one of those. And you're also going to need some reference tables. And these reference tables I found in the back of a textbook, but I have them posted for you on Schoology. So you need to have those handy too, as well as your handy dandy calculator. All right, we are going to start by looking at number one. So number one says Einstein published four important and influential papers in 1905. And what were these papers about? So here in the PowerPoint, I have the four papers listed. And this would be their complete citation. But the first paper has some big fancy title here. But basically, what is it about? Right there. An explanation of the photoelectric effect. So I wrote that down for number one. His first paper was his explanation of the photoelectric effect. The second paper uh, was the movement of small particles, blah, blah, blah. And this is kind of more of a chemistry topic, but it was called Brownian motion, Brownian motion. The third paper is about his theory of special relativity. We're going to be talking about that later on um, in this week or next week. So I wrote down special theory of relativity. And then his fourth and final paper was a paper that introduced the equation E equals MC squared. And that equation relates to binding energy. And so I wrote down E equals MC squared or binding energy. This is sometimes called Einstein's miracle year, because he wrote four very influential papers. And as we already discussed, he won the Nobel Prize for his explanation of the photoelectric effect. He really did not get a lot of acclaim for the special theory of relativity because people maybe like didn't believe it at the time. We didn't have enough evidence to know if it was true. And he, even the E equals MC squared we didn't have a lot of evidence of that one also. Okay, so we in this set of notes are gonna be focusing on E equals MC squared and binding energy. So we are basically going to be looking at the nucleus of an atom, the nucleus of an atom. So inside the nucleus of an atom, we have protons, and we have neutrons. The electrons really are important in this discussion, so we're just not going to talk about them at all. And if we look over here, we can see that we, a mass, a proton has a mass of 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27. And you can see that a neutron is a little bit bigger. And so I'm going to write our equation here, E equals mc squared. And just like you would expect, energy has to be in joules and mass has to be in kilograms. But the problem is we're gonna be getting our information from the periodic table. And the values on the periodic table are not in kilograms. They are in a unit called an atomic mass unit. So I'm going to write that down. Atomic mass units. That's what the chemistry people use. So atomic mass unit can be abbreviated as AMU, or sometimes it's just abbreviated as a U. And I point that out to you because if you went into your calculator mass conversion menu, you'll find kilograms, and you may have an AMU there or you might just have a U. But that's how we're gonna convert between the values that we get on the periodic table and to turn them back into kilograms so that we can use them in our equation. So again, the mass has to be in kilograms, the energy has to be in joules, 
but we have am use or use on the periodic table. And in the topic of nuclear energy, which is where we're leading to, instead of talking about the energy in joules, it's also very common to talk about energy in EVs, electron volts. And we're going to have a lot of electron volts. And so sometimes we convert those into mega electron volts. So we'll call those MEVs. So there's going to be a lot of converting going um, on back and forth. And that's when your calculator converting conversion menu is going to be handy. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll fill this in. So a mega EV is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, because mega is 10 to the six. So that would be 1.24 mega EVs. All right, so what is binding energy? What does the equation E equals mc squared mean? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that equation, one of the reasons it's so popular, is it has a variety of different meanings and different applications. And sometimes I find that the simplest equations have the most meaning. Example, F equals ma. We did tons of things with F equals MA. We did more than just multiply the mass times the acceleration. And E equals MC squared is the same kind of thing. So this is one application of E equals MC squared. All right, so we're going to do a quick little example problem here. So it says, suppose we wanted to create a phosphorus 31 nuclide. So let's talk about that lingo here for a minute. So the nucleus of an atom, the physics people call a nucleus a nuclide. So we want to make a nucleus of phosphorus 31. But when I look at the periodic table, I notice that phosphorus has an atomic mass number of 15, whoops, an atomic number of 15, and it has an atomic mass of 30.97. So chemistry people, 30.97. So you would say that the atomic mass rounds off to 31. But what that really means is that phosphorus exists in different isotopes. And probably the most popular isotope is 31, but there's going to be some phosphorus isotopes that have a mass less than that. And when you do the relative abundance, it turns out that it averages to 30.97. So for example, I can look in this little table here. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it too well um, in here. But here's phosphorus. And you can see that we have one type of phosphorus that has an atomic mass of 30.97 something. And another type of phosphorus that has a mass of 31. Point whoops, the 30.97 and 31.97. So there's two different kinds of phosphorus nuclei. So those are isotopes. All right, so when I look back over here, I notice that the phosphorus has an average atomic mass of 31. It had an atomic number of 15. And this is how physics people write down in symbol form a nucleus. So we have the mass, the atomic number, and the phosphorus. So if we were trying to create this nucleus from scratch, so if I wanted to create this nucleus, I'm going to have to go grab some protons and neutrons. So how many protons would I need? 15, 15 protons. I'm going to write that over here. 15 protons I'm going to need. And how many neutrons would I need? Well, if I take the mass and I subtract the atomic number, that tells me how many neutrons I'm going to need. So 31 minus 15, I'm going to need 16 neutrons. All right, so I'm going to use paper clips here to stand for protons and neutrons. We're going to pretend 
that that's 15 protons and that's 16 neutrons. So now I have my protons and neutrons and they're like just in a pile. They're really not a nucleus yet. So I would want to add up the mass of all of these protons and neutrons. And so to add up that mass, I'm going to have 15 protons. And every proton has an atomic mass unit of 1.007825. So 15 times 1.007825. And I have 16 neutrons, so that's 16 times the mass of a neutron, 1.008665. In this topic, it is super important not to round off. So I'm going to do this math in my calculator. So that's going to give me 15 times 1.007825. Plus 16 times 1.008665. That gives me a grand total of 31 point. This is where you don't want to round off. So I want all of these digits on my calculator. So I have 256015 atomic mass units. So that's the mass of what I call the uncombined particles. So now we're just going to pretend we're like a supreme being or something. I don't know. But we now are going to go in and take these particles and we're going to squish them together really nice and tight, really nice and tight until we create a nice tight nucleus. So squishing them together should not affect the mass, but it does. And that's where binding energy comes into play. I didn't do anything other than squish them together, but now I wanna look up what does the mass of a phosphorus 31 nuclide, what is the mass of that nuclide? Now we can't calculate it, we can't figure it out, we have to look it up. So that's why I'm gonna look it up in this table and I'm going to see that I have phosphorus here. We are talking about the isotope phosphorus 31. So I'll move this piece of paper up. And look at the mass. 30 point, 30 point 30.97, 37.62, 37.62. So something weird just happened. This was the mass of the uncombined particles, but when I squished them together, some of the mass went away. That's the key for the binding energy. So I know I haven't fully explained it yet, but that's one of the key takeaways that you need to see, is that you would think the mass would be the same, but it's not. This side, the uncombined particles will always be greater than the nucleus. So the question is, where did the missing mass go? All right, let's move on to page two. All right, we're going to do another example from start to finish. Okay, so it says, calculate the binding energy of a helium four nucleus. So when they put the number four there, that's the atomic mass. So we are talking about helium four. And then the number down here is going to be the atomic number. So obviously helium is number two. So I'm going to put that there. That means if I wanted to make a helium nucleus, I'm going to need two protons because the atomic number is two. And then I subtract the mass minus the atomic number, and I find out that I need two neutrons. So we're going to call this my two protons and my two neutrons. 
All right, so we know the mass on this side is going to be bigger than the mass on this side. But let's figure out what the mass on this side is. So we're going to do the same thing. Two times the magic number, and that is the atomic mass unit of a proton. So it's going to be 1.007825. We have two neutrons, 1.00. 8665. Let's add that together and figure out what the mass of the uncombined particles would be. So that's going to be 2 times 1.007825. No, that's going to make that's going to make a mess. Let me try that again. 2 times 1.007825 plus 2 times 1.008665. And we have a mass of 4.03298 AMUs. All right, so now we squish, squish, squish them together. And when we squish them together, we have a nice tight little nucleus comprised of two protons and two neutrons. What is the mass of this? I have to go look it up. So let's go back to our reference table. And we are talking about helium, which is number two. And when you look at helium here, you can see there's two kinds of helium, two kinds or two different isotopes. There's helium three and there's helium four. We're obviously talking about helium-4, so I'm going to write down this number right here. And that number is, I'm going to take off my glasses to see it, 4.002, 4.002, there's more numbers, 4.002, 6.03, And just like we expected, we have some mean mass. All right, the missing mass is called the mass defect. Like if you defect from a country, you leave the country. So some of the mass went away. We're trying to figure out where it went. All right, so the mass defect is the missing mass. So I'm going to subtract these two numbers. So I'm going to take 4.03298 minus 4.002603, and I'm going to get a syntax error. That's great. All right, let's do it again. 4.03298 minus 4.002603. All right, how much are we missing? Not very much, 0 0.003077 AMUs. That's why we don't want to drop any decimal places because we want to, we got to scoop up all of the missing mass. So if your calculator is rounding off too much for you, you may need to go into your settings and show and display more decimal places. All right, but the problem is we are trying to calculate what's called the binding energy, which I realize we haven't really explained what that is yet. But to find the binding energy, which is going to be the E in E equals MC squared, this M is not traditional mass. This mass is the missing mass. That's this, the missing mass. But we can't put AMUs in this equation. We can only put kilograms in this equation. So I'm now going to go into my mass conversion menu, and I'm going to convert AMUs into kilograms. So we'll do that here. So go to our menu. We'll go into mass. And I have this number up here. And that number on my calculator is AMUs. And I'm going to convert that into kilograms. And we find out that we're not missing a lot of mass, just a teeny bit. 
Now I can round off. I just cannot round off AMUs. All right, so I'm going to write down 5.044 times 10 to the negative 29. We are not missing too much mass, all right? But again, that's called the missing mass. That's called the mass defect. So I'm going to take that number here, and I'm going to put that in for M, the mass defect, the missing mass value. C is the speed of light. So that's going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth, but i got to square it. And now I'm calculating what is called the binding energy. We'll explain it in a minute, but let's do the number crunching. Times 3 to the 8th. Let me back that up. Times parenthesis 3 to the 8th. And I can square it. And we now get a binding energy of... 4.5398 times 10 to the negative 12 joules. All right, first of all, what does that mean? If we scooped up these particles, two protons and two neutrons, and they ended up with a total mass of 4.032 AMUs. And then we just squished them closer together. We squished them closer together. It doesn't make any sense that the mass decreased. What Einstein said is that the mass that decreased, the missing mass, the mass turned into energy and it was the energy that was used to squish these things together. So that missing mass was converted to energy to do the work to squish the particles together. So really, this is called mass energy equivalence because the mass that was missing was converted to energy. And now you have a nucleus that the work that was done to squish it together, the binding energy, I'm going to put E, is now stuck inside that nucleus. And when I say the word stuck, it means that if you split an atom, if you split this nucleus or you break it open, all that energy comes back out. So New, or Einstein told us that there is energy hidden inside of every nucleus. It ended up being the missing mass that was used to create the nucleus. And it's stored there now. So if we want to get energy, specifically nuclear energy, we break open the atom and we get or break open the nucleus and we get that binding energy out. So that's why we sometimes want to calculate how much binding energy is in a nucleus, what nuclei are worth breaking in terms of how much energy can we get out of it. So we figured out that helium has this many joules. But again, it's more common in nuclear energy to talk about the unit EVs. So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to go into my energy conversion menu and I'm going to take my joules and I'm going to convert them into EVs. How many EVs do I have? That's kind of a lot of EVs. So that is 2, 8, 3, 3, 5, 1, 9, 4, point seven six, I'll call it. And because EVs are so small and I have so many of them, it's usually more convenient to convert the EVs into mega EVs. Mega is just a metric prefix that means a million. So I just move my decimal point over six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I split a helium nucleus, 
I can get, I'm just going to round off now. I can get 28.34 mega EVs of energy out of that nucleus. So the binding energy is the missing mass. The missing mass came, was converted into energy used to create the nucleus. And now it's stored in the nucleus and it's available for us. All right, I'll let you fill in the rest of the things by looking at the PowerPoint. And there's a couple more slides and some quotes at the end um, that you should probably read. And it'll give you a little bit better understanding of this. In order to complete your homework, you're going to have to be looking at these tables because you're going to have to look up the mass of the combined nuclei, just like we did over here. All right, I hope this was enough to get you started. And uh, we'll talk soon.